All right, you've uh, hopefully seen my other ethanol videos where I take various ethanol blends, soak them in fuel lines, and show the results on a board. <clears throat> so far, I have proved that with modern fuel lines, ethanol does not attack them. Other additives and gasoline does. Also, ethanol does not varnish them, harden them, weaken them, none of that stuff. Okay, modern fuel lines are more than compatible with ethanol. Now, what's the not compatible with <coughs> modern fuel systems that's found in regular gas are various additives that are in there to clean up emissions and for fuel standards and stuff like that and so I took three of them put them to the test in a jar they've been soaking for a week okay this is toluene, benzene, xylene and I <coughs> soaked my ever favorite additive that I have been proved been lying in the last couple of videos now, not many people have heard about these. Uh, gasoline was reformulated in the late 90s, clean up emissions. These are just a few of the things that they add, but they make up the majority. You can Google any fuel station or fuel brand you want, followed by uh, MSDS, which stands for Material Data, Data, Data Safety Sheet. This is, uh, I have Flint Hills numbers here. I think they've supplied a quick trip. Just Google Flint Hills Resources, MSDS, Triple S Patron, PDF, comes right up. <clears throat> up to 15% xylene, up to 15% toluene, up to 10% ethanol, up to 7% hexane, up to 3% trimethylbenzene, up to 2.3% benzene, up to 2% ethylbenzene. So every fuel station is a little different, but they definitely at least have one to two, a lot of them have three of these in their fuel lines. Uh, abbreviation that a lot of people call them BTEX, benzene, toluene, ethylbenzene, and xylene. So, without further ado, I will dig into these and see what kind of shape they're in. <coughs> They've been in the jars for a week. These are quite cancerous and take a couple safety precautions. Put them on the board here, side by side. Is expanded some and appears very wiggly and weak. This has never hit fuel. Brand new. Huh. It can't even hold the nails. So, unfortunately, we can't test that. Next is probably the most hazardous benzene. Wow. Once again, expanded some, these are three inches. There's very weak.
Yep. That's slowly sliding out, but you can definitely see that the damage. Still waiting for popular mechanics to do this test. <clears throat> Next is xylene. Once again, very flimsy. It's actually very see through, too. Fix ethanol problems, <clears throat> which I have proved to be lying. This one doesn't appear too damaged yet. It's only been a week. I wasn't expecting much out of that one, anyways. Yeah, about the same gasoline. So, my other videos prove that E85 and other ethanol blends do not hurt fuel lines. I singled out additives and gasoline, put them to the test, they absolutely failed. This is one week, and those Three in the middle are like noodles, okay? <clears throat> You'll never see any high school kids or teachers going through this. You'll never see a popular mechanics test do this, okay? You'll never see anti-ethanol groups do this. Please tell me again how ethanol is eating your fuel lines. You've seen my other videos, you've seen my pictures. None of those people have done this, okay? It's pretty simple. I have preached for months Watch this movie. You'll never look at a fuel pump the same again. I promise you. Okay? It'll change the way you think about motor fuels. It's awesome. Now, you'll say, well, how can, how can we fix this? How can we get rid of this? Well, when you add ethanol and fuel, you replace these. Okay? And people say, well, 10%. You can't go with 10%. Okay? I, I want to give you some food for thought about 10%. That fuel line, fuel pump, all your fuel components, they're approved for 10% ethanol, have been since the early 90s. I want you to think about this. When you have a fuel line, is it 10% on the bottom as a sliver? No, I proved you fuel lines are compatible. What about the fuel tank? Is the 10% on the end compatible? No, the 10% ethanol can be anywhere. So, no, the whole thing has to be. What about polka dots? Is the 10%? You see where I'm getting at? 10% compatible is the biggest lie. Oil companies love it. They can put ethanol in regular gas because the RFS says they have to. They have trash additives in it and people can blame ethanol up and down. Even non-ethanol fuel damaged the fuel line in my last test. I mean, free, feel free to contact me. I'll send you some pictures. I'll show you the videos. Now, there's a fuel on the market, E15, EPA approved for 2001 and newer. Pull up, fill up, no check engine light, ready to rip. 500 miles by consume, 500 million miles by consumers, not one reported issue. I guarantee you, if there is an issue, big oil would blow that up into the stratosphere. That somebody had an issue with E15. All the warnings you'll see, oh, it may, 
Are they talking about these? I guarantee you, none of those articles that warn you about E15 even mention this. Again, I wonder why. Who runs the media? Okay, watch, watch this movie and it'll tell you why you don't have E15 available at your local fuel station. Another thing you can do, I bought this converter kit for my 2000 F-150, changed to E85.com. It's a plug and play kit. There's no hard parts. It's all electronics. I run E85 every day. I've had 5,000 miles problem free with the kit and I blended E85 half and half for 10,000 miles before that. Okay? So, there's nothing left to do now. I mean, I took the additives that I've been calling out for months. I finally put them to the test. I proved that they're trash. Uh, ask your dealership, your manufacturer, mechanic, ask any of them if they've tested this, if they know what they are, if your fuel components are compatible with them. Okay, I know a lot of guys that have ran E20, E30 in small engines, their vehicles, everything. So watch that movie. Uh, I run a page with a buddy called Midwest Ethanol Outpost. We share this kind of stuff daily. Okay, 2017 will be the year of ethanol if you help it move along. Okay, so I hope you understand why there's all these issues that are people scared of ethanol because they're having so much trouble with regular gas. And a lot of times you'll see people say, ethanol eats fuel lines. No, regular gas does. That contains 10% ethanol and a bunch of stuff that you never even heard about or test. So, do the test yourself. Okay, this is Big Oil's biggest nightmare. Okay, it's pretty simple stuff. Watch that movie, share it. I mean, I pretty much laid it all on the table, so enjoy it. Till next time where I talk about uh, fuel stabilizers. Got a good fun story in on those, so. We'll see you next time.